we have with us is Toyota Camry. Let's check it out. With the popularity of SUVs, the mid-size sedan segment is now a niche. In fact, the Toyota Camry is the only surviving model in the segment with the Honda Accord and Mazda 6 sedan no longer sold here. There's also a new Camry coming, so is this still worth getting? We find out. Only one variant of the Toyota Camry is available in the Philippines, and that's the 2.5 hybrid that we have here. It's priced at 2,442,000 Philippine pesos. First, with the exterior, the current Camry screams premium with its elegant yet somehow still sporty front fascia with full LED headlights and fog lights, and the large grille below for a bit of aggression. The side shows its low and long profile and the use of simple lines for a cleaner look. It rides on these sporty 18-inch two-tone alloy wheels wrapped in Bridgestone tires. The rear is even more elegant looking with the wraparound LED taillights plus hybrid badges all around since this is a hybrid only. We'll get to that later. Overall, it's a very mature look. Not for me, but some will definitely love this. Once you open the trunk which goes all the way, you'll find expansive amounts of room as you would expect from a mid-size sedan. You'll also notice the pass-through in the middle. And now we're inside the Toyota Camry Hybrid. And as you can see, we're currently starting from the back seats which is not our usual. But that's because this is the place to be in this car so let's start here in the back seat so as you can see i have loads of leg room very nice very good space over here that's why we get vehicles like this leg room foot room knee room all good headroom is a bit on the tighter side because of the sunroof in front but if you just sit normally it will be pretty good and the seats themselves are very comfortable i'm not a huge fan of the leather material they used but it is very comfortable over here we also have these very nice headrests which are the fancy kind so they do have a little bit of support on the left and on the right and here we have our center armrest which is not just an armrest so we have of course two cup holders over there and over here press the button in the middle and we have a control panel for various functions such as the radio of the car we have the rear sunshade button as well as you can see i don't know if you can see it but there we do have a rear sunshade we also have our temperature controls for our rear air fence, which we have over here we also have two usb ports down there by the way and the best function of these back seats are actually the reclining seat back so this car has reclining seat backs like a luxury sedan so just hold the button the touch sensitive button and you can recline the back seat which does make this even more comfortable than it all ready is so just for the push of that button again the seat can be adjusted and both sides can be adjusted as well and now we're in the front seats of the camry the cockpit of this car and you'll notice here that the design is getting a bit old but that's not surprising because this actually came out first in 2017 but at least toyota did give it a few updates to keep it looking fresh so first let's talk about how it looks here so we have a three layered design over here we have three levels over there you can see that and the first layer on top we do have a really soft touch plastic material it's very very soft actually then the middle we have some piano black and this textured plastic material which looks really really expensive when you look at it so that's really nice we also have mood lighting over there and then we have more soft touch plastics with some brown stitching that to make it look like leather but it's just soft touch plastic at least it is soft and does feel pretty nice and then they did use a lot of diagonal lines over here as you can see that all looks pretty good still even today and then moving here we have this three spoke steering wheel it's the usual toyota steering wheel that you will find in vehicles like the rav4 it's also very similar to what you'll find in the corolla cross and corolla altis and in this car it is power adjustable power tilt and telescopic it also has memory function paired with the driver's seat. Then on the left, we have our controls for our instrument cluster and some full audio controls. On the right, more audio controls and our controls for Toyota safety sense. So everything is here on the steering wheel. Then for the horn, it's not your usual Japanese car horn. So it sounds very European, sounds big, very fitting for a big car, for a big and expensive car like this. And then going back to the instrument cluster, we do have our traditional analog gauges on the left and on the right which i really like then on the left is our display for our hybrid system on the right our speedometer fuel level 
so i really like how it looks with a i believe seven inch display in the middle this is my preferred setup and it doesn't look that old when you look at it but the graphics could be improved still they are starting to show their age even if the overall look isn't that old but the screen does show us lots of information our fuel economy our speedometer again then our driver assist our audio and our hybrid display again for the hybrid system rather and then in the middle we have our nine inch touchscreen infotainment system this one was added in this facelifted camera so the infotainment actually used to be down here now it's on top while the vents used to be up there you can actually still see the outline of them over there but they're now here in the middle of the dashboard or the center stack then the screen itself it's pretty familiar if you've been in a corolla cross or a rav4 so it's a familiar toyota system it's not the most responsive anymore but generally responsive and the graphics are not the best it's a bit crunchy honestly it does look a bit dated for this car it really shows how old this car is but at least everything that you want to do is very easy to find everything is easy to use and it's not that hard to navigate then we also have our buttons on the left and on the right side our knobs so those are all very helpful we have apple carplay and android auto of course very nice to have as always and we also have here our display for our hybrid system again so you can see how the power is distributed in the powertrain of this car and even our history for that then moving down we have our climate control so knobs buttons a small display in the middle all very nice to have then moving further down we have a wireless phone charger we have a usb port and 12 volt power outlet honestly though the usb port is a bit slow to charge my phone so that's a bit old school as well then here two cup holders we have our traditional gear shifter over here very nice feels very nice as well the only thing i do find annoying here is when you put the car in reverse it makes that very annoying beeping sound which is also typical toyota it's just very very annoying i wish i could turn it off and also you'll see that when you put the car in reverse you do have the 360 camera which doesn't look the best as well so the graphics looks like something from the 90s honestly it's not the best and but at least we do have it over there then moving a bit back we have our eco normal and sport buttons our auto hold function ev mode button for pure ev driving and our electronic parking brake then for the seats they're also quite comfortable that's what we'd expect from a vehicle like this they're very comfortable not a fan of the, mater the leather material they used but again they are very comfortable they are very supportive and they have a load of controls memory function again like i mentioned earlier and now we're driving the toyota camry hybrid and this is actually my first time to experience this car as a driver so i've never been in this generation camry so yeah this is my very first time and so far i'm liking it but i do feel like that this is a car for an older person to drive but everything is good really here Let's start with the power train so this is powered by a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated gasoline engine that is paired to a 120 horsepower electric motor and in total it produces 211 horsepower toyota unfortunately doesn't provide us the exact torque but the engine does produce 221 newton meters and that is paired to a cvt and having only driven toyota's more affordable hybrids like the corolla cross the yaris cross i'm actually surprised by how this performs so that's given because this is their flagship sedan in the market right now so it should drive really well and that's what we get here because it's actually very responsive when you put your foot on the accelerator it responds instantly the engine has a lot of power has a lot of torque it's actually pretty instant like as if you were driving a fully electric car it's a lot more responsive than with their other hybrid vehicles and honestly that's something i did not expect from this car you may not think based on how it looks that it actually drives really quickly it's really fast that's not what it looks like but it really is and in addition we do get a very throaty sound from that 2.5 liter engine sounds really good to hear just put your foot down and you'll hear it sounds really good and then when it comes to handling it feels like a typical toyota hybrid vehicle so there's really not much to talk about in that regard the steering is a bit weighted but it's not full of feedback it's not the best feeling a honda accord will definitely handle better than this car but that's how it has always been with the camry and the accord but at the same time despite being a bit weighted it is light enough for your usual city driving 
and of course being a hybrid at lower speeds you do get to drive on purely electric power or when you are slowing down to a stop or coasting so like right now we're currently not accelerating so we're currently on electric power but we put our foot down and the engine will kick in but if you're driving in lower speeds even if you're accelerating there is a huge chance that you will be driving purely on electric power and it also makes a really cool electric car sound when you are on pure electric power and then when it comes to NVH insulation this is actually both good and bad weirdly so it's good in the sense that overall the car is pretty quiet the ride quality is amazing it's what you'd expect from a sedan like this a mid-size sedan very smooth ride the suspension does an amazing job of taking all of those road imperfections regardless of what kind of imperfection it is it's all good but the road noise is actually something that I did not expect to have in this vehicle quite loud so especially at highway speeds it can get a bit too loud in my opinion although I'm not surprised considering that this car is about a year more than a year almost two years old so the tires might be a bit worn out making it a bit louder but again it is a lot louder than I expected also for wind noise so at highway speeds there is a lot more wind noise in this car as well compared to my personal car which is an SUV and SUVs usually have lots of wind noise this one has more than that also actually my main gripe with this car is the way the engine sounds when it kicks in at city speed so it really makes itself known that it has turned on you'll feel the vibration you'll hear it really loud and that's something that's common with these Toyota hybrids unfortunately compared to a recent Chinese hybrid that I reviewed that one is really smooth in its operation this one is a bit rough so I think they can still improve that in the future unfortunately no one is here to drive me I, I really want to tell you about how it feels like riding at the back seat but still despite this being a car that is more perfect for you as a passenger it does drive pretty well and now you're probably wondering how much fuel economy do we get in this car because this is a hybrid so we actually get pretty good numbers of course as expected you don't really get good fuel economy numbers from a mid-size sedan but in this one we get an amazing 22 kilometers per liter in the city it can actually do more but the average is 22 kilometers per liter with some traffic and on the highway you can achieve about the same but that's expected because the gasoline engine will be running a lot more while you're on the highway so you can get 22 kilometers per liter both city and highway driving and for driver assistance tech of course this is equipped with toyota safety sense so it gets the full suite of that we have adaptive cruise control autonomous emergency braking or what they call pre-collision assist we have lane tracing lane departure alert we have everything in this car and being a toyota as expected this is one of the best in the business when it comes to driver assistance technology so i won't explain one by one how they feel but overall being a toyota again and having perfected the technology somewhat already this is one of the best when it comes to that the toyota camry is proof that there is still a market for a mid-size sedan despite it now being the only one here it's not for everyone that's for sure but you definitely won't go wrong if you choose to buy one and this is also a very good alternative for those who don't need the ground clearance that is offered by our very popular pickup based suvs